I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And in this video, we're gonna be talking to you about breakups lead to soul searching. This is so true. Is there anything as life-changing as a breakup, as motivating to change your life to ch as a breakup? There's a few things, but... Not many. <laughs> Not many. Not many. I mean, there are life-changing things, mm -hmm. but something that really makes you wanna change really deeply who you are at your core and work on yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't see much that comes up that is as motivating as a breakup. And that's the thing that I love the most about it. Mm -hmm. It really inspires people to, to grow and change. I agree. And it's something that is so confusing because it's losing somebody that's still alive. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's it changes your view of relationships completely. It really does. Because we look at ourselves, we look at what went wrong we we look at why they would leave us how they could do it to us mm -hmm. if there's something wrong with us did did we not treat them well and all kinds of other areas and so i think it's great that people are this motivated after a breakup to change their life and i hope that all of you want to take a look at yourself and not necessarily blame yourself but just be accountable for who you are who you want to be and focus on the positive aspects of change and things that could come in your life. Right, and for a lot of you, a breakup does mean change in a lot of other ways. Many of you are living with a partner, so it means a change in living situation. Many of you have planned futures with a partner, mm. so it means literally changing the direction of your life. So this is why it is so important to talk about know how a breakup impacts you Absolutely. and really dissect it and yeah. really go into it rather than you know trying to push away the feeling or escape it or not understand it yep so we have a beautiful email success story that I wanted to share with you guys uh, they said hi coach I wanted to share a long overdue update with you on my life now guys we always want to hear success stories okay. from you whatever that may be you can send them to my uh, on the website, there's an email you can send it to and just put success story in the subject. I did a call with a guy this week. Mm -hmm. He got back with his ex for a, about a year and a half. Now they're struggling again because he said, I didn't do the work. Now they're on the verge of divorce. But he told me, he's like, yeah, we've been together. We were great for about over a little bit over a year and now things are falling apart again. And I said, so you got back with her and you didn't give me a success <laughs> story? And he looked at me and he's like, like you knew. Yeah. So that happens all the time. Many people, when you're going through it, you're feeling it, you're on the channel watching videos every day, but then you get your ex back and you don't let us know. Mm -hmm. So there are many times people do get their ex back and they just don't tell us. So when you're watching, we want to hear it. Yeah, we please, do. Please update us. Yeah, absolutely. Because mm -hmm. we know who you are. I, I recognize the guy, even though it had been like a year and a half since we did our coaching. Mm -hmm. I recognize him. It only took me a few minutes to re remember his situation right. and who he was. And even if we have been doing this for a while, it's still always helpful for us to gather more and more information. So it just adds to our knowledge. It adds to the situations that we've seen. And you know, your situation might be unique and we might learn something from it too. So That's please true. share. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So let's go on. She said, my own letters to you back in 2019 reminded me how tough how all-consuming it once all seemed to be, and how it could all turn around with due time and efforts. The ex in the story I dated back in 2018 broke up in April of 2019. I was the one getting dumped. I then learned about attachment theories through many hazy days and sleepless nights by listening to you and Coach Margaret 
in the empty apartment. I also learned that we were a typical anxious avoidant pair mm -hmm. with me being the anxious one. As hopeless as the situation might have been, I was determined to get out of it through no contact and every other tool at my disposal. I turned my attention to the knowledge workbooks, readily available, clearly written, and packed with wisdom. The path to growth was laid out in chapters like the road signs on a hiking trail, and all I had to do was to follow the signs and tackle them one by one. Those nights with the workbook seemed isolating at times, and I often had to pause because the hard questions from the workbook were often the first time I was asked such questions in my life. Mm. And that's the point. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be difficult because you're challenging ideas, you're challenging who you've been, who you wanna be, learning skills, thinking about you know situations that went wrong and how you can do it better in the future yeah exactly you and know? you know it really is a great tool to guide you i like how she described you know that guidance that's really what we aimed to do and yeah. even the way we structured the workbooks and the course was all with that in mind you know trying to think about where you're at in the process and trying to give you just you know a gentle push in the right direction yep and what you guys don't realize is that coach victoria was helping me do all the work from far away in another country. Yes, this is true. We were doing the workbooks well before she was ever on the channel. Mm -hmm. We were doing them, talking about them every day, working mm -hmm. on it every day for weeks and months and probably about a, a year it took us yeah. to do the whole set, yeah. right? Soul searching was inevitable side effect and the growing pain was like rubbing alcohol on the wound of a fresh breakup. Mm. And yes, I kept my promise to you of no contact back in 2019. Like most other exes, mine reached out via text to ask to see me after a couple of months of radio silence. I happened to be out of town at that time, and as much as I wanted to teleport myself in front of him, I kept my cool and said I would have loved to see him after a few weeks when I returned to town. The interesting thing was, he never reached out after those few weeks. Several more months passed and I have started to pick up the pieces of my life. Deep down, I wasn't moving on emotionally because I was still waiting for his text back to see me again. And this happens so often. And when you're in it, it is so confusing because you're thinking, well, my ex said, you know, we would spend time together or we would talk, you know, eventually. And so you are, on a cliffhanger, still mm -hmm. waiting for that and still holding them to it, you know? So it, it this is a confusing situation. Yeah, it's tough. It's yeah. really tough. Because it, it's like all you can think about. Mm -hmm. It's like you can't kind of move forward because you yeah. you're stuck waiting for that text. Right, and you're thinking, did they mean it? Did they forget? You know, are they intentionally waiting? So you start to answer the question of why haven't they you know, taken up that offer that they had offered. Yeah. No, so it's it's hard to deal with that uncertainty, especially when, you know, you're not hearing from someone when there's a promise to. Yeah, it's, it is really tough. Mm -hmm. She goes on to say, I talked to my local therapist about what to do. I wanted to start my new life with or without him. My therapist asked how long it had been since we last talked via text, and I had said several months. My therapist gave me permission to text him and ask if he still wanted to meet up like he said last time. I then reached out to my ex via text on the steps outside of my therapist's office while I still had the courage to do so. Three days later, I got the text back. You could probably imagine how nervous I had been throughout every hour of those three days. The answer, disappointingly, was that he no longer wanted to meet up because he just met someone new. Mm. Now, please understand, therapists are not trained in breakups. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't talk to your therapist about a breakup. You should. They can help you process it and heal. But no schools that I've ever heard of give x back strategies or a course or anything like that. And if they did, we should be the ones teaching it. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. But... And I will say too, you know, 
I, I'm not sure about the language she's using, um, but I've noticed a couple times in the email that it's it's almost like she's waiting for somebody to tell her what to do. Yeah. You know, and we encounter this a lot, you know, in a breakup, you feel lost, you don't know what to do. Yeah. And so sometimes you can be looking at somebody for, you know, a, a clear answer, maybe a little bit more than guidance, more somebody, you know, really carrying you through the way. It is our job to empower you to make the best decision for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, so her just saying the therapist gave her permission. You know, it makes me wonder how much she's influenced by other parties, if she's really taking in, you know, all the information that she needs to be able to make her own decision. And earlier she had said something about, you know, I promised you that I would do no yeah. contact. <laughs> I mean, whatever works to help you out, you know. Yeah. It was like a personal promise to Coach Craig. I promise. I made, you signed Craig. this contract. I should make people sign contracts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So our job is to empower you to make your own decisions, you know. So I, I'm hoping that. Um, you know, she can go in that route and feel like she has more information to make good decisions for herself. Absolutely. That's my little rant. <laughs> All right. So let's, let's see. What do you think happened? Okay. Mm. He said he met somebody new. How do you think it went? What do you think is going to happen for her? Let's find out. I took a deep breath and replied as courteously as I could that I wished him all the best and we should stop talking to each other. A lot has changed in my life since 2019. I moved to a new city, finished graduate school, changed jobs twice, survived the pandemic, and dated a handful of people. I got engaged in 2022, and in early 2023, I married my now husband. Wow. We adopted a dog together soon after, and we are now expecting our first baby. Wow, congratulations. Isn't that great? That's great. That is really great. Yeah. yeah. You know, you think you don't hear from your ex. It's going to be devastating. You won't find somebody else. Mm -hmm. You won't find somebody new. And look now, her whole life has changed. And I'm sure she's thrilled. She's married now. She's mm -hmm. having a baby. That's great. Yeah. And it sounds like the most important work that she did was in the rut of that grief. You know, being able to soul search for herself. Yeah. You know, it seemed like there was an element of, yes, disappointment when her ex didn't respond the way that she wanted him to. Mm -hmm. But it seemed like she already had the resources and the tools to know what to do next. She had done a lot of work on herself mm -hmm. too. So let's see what happens. That's not the end of the story. Uh-oh. It made my head spin when I saw my ex in the flesh on the subway last week. Oh my goodness. This was the first time we had seen each other since we broke up in 2019. Through social media, I had known that like me, he had also moved to that city. I won't say where. Mm. But in a city with millions of people, what of the odds of such an encounter? And this is so fun to me because everybody always has this intense feeling of dread of, I will never see this person again. I will mm -hmm. never talk to them yes, again. Yes, somebody said that to me just two like two days ago. And it's always, you, you're thinking about, man, I didn't know that our last moment together was going to be our last. You know, you really have the sense that the person has died. But life is long, you guys. Life, mm -hmm. life is very unpredictable. You don't know where you might run into somebody. Now, I'm not saying to stalk people yeah. at all. <laughs> you better say don't do it. Don't, don't stalk don't people. Don't stalk people. Please, please. But what we're saying is that you know, there's so many unexpected things that can happen. And life is rarely extremes. Life is rarely completely black and completely white. And it often goes very different than what you expect. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what happened? I was sitting next to my husband on the subway on our way home on a Saturday afternoon, and there he was, my ex, walking into the subway from the door right in front of us. Trailing him was presumably his current girlfriend. I recognized my ex right away and told my husband what I saw in a hushed voice. Right? <laughs> He gently picked up my hands and held them in his. See, so how, that was so comforting of him oh, to do sweet. that. Through my sunglasses, I was able to observe the dynamic of those two. In a semi-crowded subway cart, we were about six feet away from each other. It took him a solid while before he finally turned his head towards our direction. And there he was, like he was being tasered by what he saw quickly turned his head away. 
I was wondering what he was going to do next, now that we've both seen each other. In true avoidant fashion, he pulled out a pair of sunglasses, oh, wow. a pair of wireless earbuds, and put them in. He's like, nope, don't see, you, don't see you, don't hear you. <laughs> He's like, I am not existing right now. I do not want to be perceived. <laughs> exactly. He then left his current partner alone on the subway and walked towards the distant back end of the subway cart and found an empty place Ooh. to sit down. So he even abandoned his current girlfriend. That's how much he panicked. Wow. Doesn't think, don't, you guys don't think it affects him? Of course it does. Look mm -hmm. at what he's done here. Mm -hmm. He didn't wave, he didn't smile. Yeah. He ran. Wow. <laughs> he ran away from his girlfriend. Wow. Sunglasses on, earbuds in, and fetal position. I wonder what the, the girlfriend was thinking or doing. Yeah, she's really, what, where are you going? What are yeah. you doing? Hmm. In a few more stops, he got off the subway with his new girlfriend from the door farthest away from us. Hmm. Of course, I don't know the details of my ex's life right now, but in a moment of perhaps unpleasant surprise, he stuck with the avoidant ways. I thought about whether I wanted that in my life right now had we gotten back together. After learning what I've learned throughout the years, thanks to you and Margaret, the answer is no. Mm. I knew I deserved better than avoiding tendencies in the most intimate connection of my life. Wow, that is a very powerful statement right there. It really is, right? Mm -hmm. It was probably a blessing that we've missed each other when we did. And in a way, thanks to him, I got to know you and Margaret. Sorry, you weren't here yet. <laughs> it's before you. After learning what I've learned throughout the years, thanks to you and Margaret, the answer was no. I knew I deserved better than avoiding tendencies in the most intimate connection in my life. Wow. That was a very profound statement right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was probably a blessing that we've missed each other when we did. And in a way, thanks to him, I got to know you and Margaret and I got to know myself better in the process. I am thankful to you and rest in peace, Margaret. Mm. So that was a great story mm -hmm. and it was good to hear from her. I knew who it was as soon as I read the name. Mm. You guys don't realize we, we know who all of you are when we do coachings with you, especially if we've done more than one coaching with you. Mm -hmm. You know, we get to know you guys and what's going on in your life and we're always hearing updates like this. So I, as soon as I saw the name, I, I knew exactly who it, is, mm. who it was. So I'm so happy for her. You know, she's happy. You've heard it. She's glad she's not back with her ex. She's married. She's got a baby on the way. Her life is good. Mm -hmm. And I think there is a beautiful irony in this of her meeting her ex on the subway and her, you know, immediately having a reaction herself of, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening for years. You know, I've been toiling over this situation and this person mm -hmm. and having her partner there supporting her, yeah. having her partner there soothing her and helping her calm down. You know, I think that was really a beautiful moment. Well, exactly. And not only that, look at what he did. Mm -hmm. Sunglasses on, earbuds in, and he abandoned his girlfriend to run to the back of the cart and then got on the furthest exit to mm -hmm. get off the stop. So look at that, yeah. Yeah. you know, for her, it worked out great. Mm -hmm. And she did a lot of soul searching along the way. She did the work. Uh, she was in therapy. She was doing the workbooks. She's changed her life and now she's doing great. Yeah. So no matter what happens with your ex, you can be a success story. When you focus on personal growth and healing, and becoming a person that you love, that you're proud of, that you're confident, that you're more secure, and you don't worry so much about what another person does or chooses for themselves. And they might not be healthy for you anyway. And it was also very beautiful to see how her desires changed. You know, her saying that for the most important connection in my life, you know, the one person that I'm probably gonna spend the most time in my adult life with, you know, I deserve more than somebody who has these avoidant tendencies. Yep. And so seeing this other person, the ex, 
you know, also ex exhibiting some of those avoidant traits of yep. shutting down. I don't want to be here. I don't want to see this. I don't want to deal with this. You know, I, I could see that moment also being confirmation for her that, you know, she made the right decision. Absolutely. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one and it was helpful to you. Of course, if you want to get our help personally, you can do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Coach Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. I'm here whenever you'd like to chat. Just click on her name to schedule with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon. Thank you.